My no, pleasure. Thank you. See, that's the, the, the first lesson is I didn't think about that that was going to be read out. And so when you're reading, when you're, when you're um, reading the written word, it actually needs to be written differently to when you're, yeah, when you're reading it, when you're speaking it, I'm sorry. And that's the same as when you're doing uh, media interviews, is if you are doing a media interview with a print journalist, you would answer differently to if you were doing a media interview with a TV journalist or if you're doing a media interview with a radio journalist because it has a different forum. So if you were being interviewed by a print journalist, um, you could be a little bit more verbose because they will copy and paste what you have to say. Um, but if you're being interviewed for TV, if this is live TV, I would need to know exactly what I was going to say and I need to get it out. And make it really colourful so that I become a good talent um, for the journalists and that I will become their go-to person. Um, who has um, approached the media, sent a press release to the media, been in the media, anything? Who's used it? Yeah, okay. And I will just like to say we have, um, I, I did uh, meet Mel just recently and um, it's an absolute pleasure to come along and talk today and I mentioned to Mel before, as someone who works in the media and PR, I'm very particular about who I do business with and I'm very particular about who I network with because, um, because you all become my business card. Your customers are all your business card and your brand and there's some amazing talent um, and um, dynamic women in this room. Um, and so that when these people then go out and promote your, your business, they are promoting you. So why would we, 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 I was asking for who's used the media, why would you even bother? A lot of people think, oh no, I'm not going to use the media, I'm going to advertise or oh, I'm not big enough to use the media or no one's going to want to know about my story or I've got too much to do. Why do you think you would use the media? Yeah, it's free, it's free exposure, free stuff's good stuff. For me, it's about for me. Yeah. Do we have a pen? Yeah. Okay, great. So you would you could position yourself as an expert. Um, we mentioned that it was free. Um, what else? Yeah, that's a really really important one. Can you explain that, Tanya? Yeah, edification. So it's very, it's more powerful if someone says Tiki's a good writer and she's a bestseller than Tiki saying I'm a good writer and I'm a bestseller. So you don't know who's listening out there, you know, someone might be like, oh wow, I could use this person. So it's a big audience, isn't it? Yeah. What about, they say in, in sales for instance, I know none of us like to think of ourselves as salespeople, but we pretty much all are. Um, it's, it's harder to find a new customer than it is to keep a current customer. And so you want to do everything that you can to keep your current customer. And uh, what happens, um, how do you keep customers with you? Like how do you make a customer loyal? Give them value. Build a relationship. Build a relationship. Yep. If a, cust if a customer's got a good relationship with you and likes you and knows you and trusts you, do you think it's hard for them to break up with you and go to someone else? And what does the media do? Like how many people feel like they, I mean, uh, did everyone see um, Miley Cyrus at the, uh, at the recent movie awards? How many mums are just shaking their heads? Yeah, you know, I'm embarrassed for her dad and I don't even know Miley and here I am talking about her dad as though he's someone in my circle of friends. So what the media does is they create a relationship. You, as a reader, feel like you know the person that's in the paper. So you build a relationship with that person. So it's a really great icebreaker and you go from being a salesperson or, or someone trying to force something on you to someone that people can actually, actually relate to and build a relationship with. So we all know, particularly in this day and age when there's so many options out there to buy things online and I mean I was just in, when I was buying this connection which works brilliantly, I was um, in JB Hi-Fi online saying to the guy, because I actually got hooked in to buy a speaker as well, I said to him, what price are you going to give me this for because I can get it such and such online. So, you know, there are so many options out there. So, you know, um, one way um, to overcome the amount of choice that our customers have is to create that customer service and to build that relationship and that's what the media, one of the big things that the media can do. As well as 
position yourself as an expert, that's a massive one um, uh, that happens. Um, and I'm going to go into a little bit more about that in just a moment. Okay, so the media machine, you can't see this, I'm afraid, but I did share this um, on the Mums and Business uh, Powered Mums page. 20 for, there's 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year up for grabs. Users now online all the time, all year. How exciting is that? And we're all little journalists because we've all got smartphones. We can all capture and you know make YouTubes and, and clips and so forth. So um, we might get our in-house accountant to confirm this, but by my calculations, that is 525,600 minutes of free publicity opportunities. 525,600 minutes. We just, each of us are just hoping to get 30 seconds. Do you think you could get 30 seconds out of half a million opportunities? It can't be that hard, can it? So, um, well, <laughs> a little bit. Um, who's paid for an advert? Who's paid for online? And how much did that cost you? Yeah, hundreds of thousands. And did you get much conversion? Yeah. Mm. Well, the general, the general, yeah, seven to eleven times exposure is what they say. But the thing is, is that all of us, and and women in particular, are mums. We know everyone's out to get us. We know there's a bit of a you know, it's maybe not the best deal. We know it's an ad, so we don't trust ads. It's an advertorial. People are paid for their endorsements. People are trying to sell you stuff. Editorial is something different. Editorial is, is an article that's not paid for. So if it's an article that's not paid for, it's a lot more trustworthy. So apart from getting that third party endorsement, it also must be true. So that's also why getting free press is much more powerful than paying for an advert because it's not trusted, because people know you've paid for that. Does that make sense? Okay. So, inside the media machine, I'm really sorry it's, 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 we, we can't get this hooked up, but never in history ever has there been so many opportunities for us. And so many media outlets out there. When I first started as a journalist 18 years ago, hard to believe I know, <laughs> um, but there was one book um, for uh, the Media Contact Database, which is a, the Margaret Gee's Guide, and it, it was fairly expensive back then, but it was only about that thick. Um, yeah, it still is, but there's also so many, more, um, so many more media databases out there, online, electronic, and they have literally hundreds of thousands um, of contacts in there. And, and there are all kinds of areas where you could get, you could position yourself as an expert in publications that you haven't even thought of where you can also practice your skills so that you feel confident when today, tonight or a current affair or live radio do call you. And you can also use that publicity and those smaller publications to then promote the hell out of that on your Facebook page, on your business page, in your personal newsletter to again position yourself as an expert because it all is all down to perceptions. Um, so there's trade journals, um, there's industry specific journals, there's corporate newsletters that you can get on board with. Um, and then of course there's magazines, there's online magazines, there, and a lot of these online publications are much easier to get into than print publications because they constantly need new news every hour, every half hour. And even if it's only up there for 15 or 30 minutes, um, it's still up there and you can still use that. So you've never had the flexibility and the opportunity that you have right now. And if you're sitting here thinking it's not relevant to me, I'm not going to use it, your competitor probably is. So you might want to rethink that. Okay, so because there are so many opportunities, you really need to know your time slot. You need to know where your demographic is. Who has your demographic? Which publication should you go to? Um, I, for instance, at the moment have, um, doing a PR, for um, a former Hollywood um, a movie producer, really, really interesting person, and the um, the story would be great in a uh, in a men's magazine, big glossy uh, men's magazine. But that's not his demographic. His demographic are women. So we're looking at doing it to Women's Day or New Idea. So you need to know where your demographic, um, what they're reading. Do they read um, um, Take Five? 
That might not be the publication that you would like to frame and put on your wall, but that will bring you the most sales. And that's what it's about. It's converting um, editorial into sales for you. Um, you can't see this, but um, I think it's really important when, you know, when you're working with people that they've walked the talk, not just talked it. And I mentioned before uh, when we were talking about different income streams that I had um, another business and it was doing very, very, very well. And I was in a lot of uh, media. I was in, on A Current Affair. Uh, I was in The Weekend Australian magazine. Um, <laughs> and people would say to me, um, how, how do you do it? How do you, you get the free press that you do? And I didn't tell anybody because it was my edge. Um, it was my little, um, my little secret. And so when the tsunami had another idea about what I was going to be doing, um, that's now what I share with people. So I just wanted to point out that I, um, I do practice what I preach. I don't just do this for other people. I do, just, I do this uh, for myself as well. Okay, so I mentioned I've, uh, I've worked in the media machine. And you can use it too. But... Uh, what would be your biggest concern if you were to go to the media? Who, yep. Okay, your business isn't ready. Timing's never perfect. Timing's never perfect to have kids, to buy a new car. Yeah, um, I think that's a little bit of procrastination there. Yeah. <laughs> so I say, I had some, I did some coaching with Annie years ago, and I was doing PA for us, and she said to me, I was going to get it training. You know, you guys are getting on to the Today Show, you can tell me that you can take it up, you can be ready. Do you know what I mean? Like, I wrote in a lot of the paper, I didn't have a lot of this, I didn't have anything. Right. But I was, Check out my website at the moment. It's being rebuilt. Yeah. That's a legitimate concern. That is a legitimate concern. That is something that you do need to be aware of. Um, I'm actually, I, I do do, just to take a side issue, I do do media training and, and, and it is expensive because of, of what I do share. However, uh, I am looking at doing something very fun, very soon, that will be very affordable for everyone in this room. If they want to come along and um, do some role playing with some drinks at night. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be about, it's going to be about $35 to $40 a head. How cool is that? Normally when I do media training, it's $880 per person for three hours. But we're actually going to do this in a really fun environment. I can't give too much away because of intellectual property. <laughs> um, but I'll make sure that Melissa puts the sound out to let you all know because that is a legitimate concern. And, and reputations are built over a lifetime and they can be and have been destroyed in the media in seconds. But there are certain things that you can do to make sure that that or, or minimise that that's likely to happen to you. And that is where media training comes in. Like when, when I was helping Melissa with some of her um, media, one of the things that um, I find really important is when I work with people, I actually always, um, I always have a media brief ready to go so that if you were to lose control of the conversation, if they were to go into an area that you would rather not have them go, or if they were misinterpreting and you were finding yourself down a very negative path that you weren't expecting, there are certain things that you can do to bring yourself back on track. It's about, it is about being practiced, it is about role playing, it is about practicing. It's also having confidence in your story and, um, and that's what I'd like to move on to is content. What, where people, a lot of business owners fail is when they're trying to get media, is they're trying to sell their business, they're trying to promote their business. The media can smell a salesperson's pitch a mile off, you need to have a story. Um, was it Julie? Julie was just sharing before about her amnesia. As a journalist, I, that is a very interesting story and I said to Julie, can I please have your card? Uh, because it's stories that sell. 
So for all of us that have products and services, it's not you as a marriage celebrant or, or, or you with beautiful oils. Um, it was your story about epilepsy. I have epilepsy as well. Um, so it was your sharing of your story about epilepsy that would, you know, if I was, I actually you already used the terror, but if I, if I wasn't, that would make me think. So what story do you have or do your customers have that have news value? And that's how you get publicity for your business. Does that make sense? I've got to tell you, even as, as a journalist, when I have been on TV and I've been interviewed for Current Affair and, and, and whatnot, it's nerve-wracking. Even with all the experience that I have, if I was to stand... No, that's fine, that's fine. If I was to just put a video camera or a tape recorder in front of you, most people will freeze. They will just... Uh, you just can't think. So what I'm looking at doing with a friend of mine is we're going to give you some role play practice, which you don't get access to, but we're going to make it fun, right? Yeah, it's going to be fun. We're, we're going to ma it's going to be like a game show. It's going to be pretty awesome. <laughs> okay, we've got 10 minutes. We've got to cruise through this. Sorry, no. Story, you were talking about the content and the story mm. and how that is. Mm. Question. Mm. Because this is what stumped, stumped me a lot of the time to telling my story. Because I am writing a book and it's just like a key thing. So I'm going to apologise to you and ask for No. Right. Yeah. So well, that's okay. You got a yeah. run on the board. Nothing <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> She's a divorce celebrant. That's the story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's good. But my question is: that okay for it? Like, is it okay to to be honest? Because it's not a great. St I mean, there'd be so plenty of divorce so celebrants so out there. There'd be plenty of yeah. yeah. But it's not. not okay. Well, let me ask you this. Have you found another happy ending? Because that might be a nice story. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, no, probably not. Not unless there were some new stats coming out. There are certain things that make stories stories, and timeliness is one of them. Um, I, in fact, have been working with an event planner at the moment. There have been some stats that have just come out, but I can't share it because I'd be ruining that person's story. But um, there are things that come out in the news, and if you can tie in with them, that is a great way to get your media in the business. Like, for instance, there's, um, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the lady's name, who has um, pool safety. I've got a lot of me. Tammy Ritchie. Tammy Ritchie. Um, you know, Tammy um, is positioned herself. Expert in, um, in in swimming safety, and therefore, any time there's ever any a story about swim safety, about pool fencing, about anything like that, Tammy can, if she needed to, I mean, she's been in the media so many times, can come in on that. Lillian's the same. If there's some issue with kids out of control, a new study that's come out from overseas, keep an eye out in the paper. If it's in your area, if there's some new stats on divorces. Put your hand up as a divorce celebrant, that then becomes a story. Might not be a story for the Courier Mail or the Sunday Mail, but think small, it might be a story for the Sun or the Gold Coast Bulletin or something like that. Does that answer you? And by the way, I'm very happy to just answer questions because I think that that can be more powerful than me telling you what I think you would like to hear. Um, so please feel free. Okay, so the food chain is very, very, very important. I mentioned before um, you might not have a story for the, for the Courier Mail or the Sunday Mail. If you do have a story for the Kuramal or the Sunomal, please don't waste it in a local publication. There is a food chain in the media, okay? So you, if you have a story that is going to have big appeal, you start big and then you trickle it down to all the other publications and you reinvent it. For instance, I'm currently doing a publicity campaign for the Asthma Foundation and I have I have about eight press releases that I'm working on at the moment from two stories. One is the main story that will feed into these other little stories and then there's this one story about some dancers and there's, there's four or five dancers and I'm rewriting the first couple of parts for each of the suburban newspapers that those dancers come from. But the story will go to the Courier Mail first because if I spoil it and I run that main story in the suburban newspapers, the Courier Mail don't want to be seen following the local freebie fish and chip wrapper throw out. So you do need to respect that. 
TV feed off print, print can still feed off TV. So you do really need to understand, you know, where do you want, where do you want to go when you've got a story like that. If you're unsure about something, I have a Facebook page. I'm more than happy for you to come and say, hey Tanya, I've got a story. Where do you think I might be best to, to pitch this? I'm thinking about this or this. How does it work in the feeding zoo? And I'm more than happy to help. Uh, right on target. I've got some cards in the middle there as well. Please feel free um, to, to take one. Um, now, before you contact the media, you do need, Mel mentioned it before, you, you have to be ready to go. Okay? It doesn't matter that your web page isn't perfect. It doesn't matter that you don't have everything in place. None of that matters. But how do you look? Do you have, uh, do you have regrowth? Does your hair need doing? Um, <laughs> I'm not looking at anyone. <laughs> That's always a bit awkward. <laughs> Um, what are you going to say? What if they say, you know what, we just had a story fall over, we can be there in five minutes. Are you in your pyjamas? <laughs> Is the house a mess? You do need to have a little bit of foresight. You also do need to think about what day of the week is it going to be best to send your story out. Most of the time you're better off sending your story out at about 7am on a Sunday morning. Yep, journalists um, are, hard, are hard up for news. Um, most of the time, apart from if there's been you know, a death or a disaster or there's an election or something, Sundays are a really great time because they, they need to find stories. So Sunday for Monday's paper is a good one to go for. The downside of that is Monday's paper is a little bit smaller so there's less room, but you now have all these online publications as well. You need to know when the deadlines are for your local newspapers and then you need to get in about three days before that deadline. If the deadline is at Thursday, don't go to them on Friday um, of the, uh, if, if it's, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so if it's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and this is their deadline, don't go here because that's old news, okay? Hasn't run yet, but they've seen it in their inbox for a while and they're bored. Journalists, we have very tiny attention spans. That's why I have two businesses. <laughs> um, come up here on Monday. Pitch it to them on Monday. Find out if they're working on Sunday. Okay? Um, so you need to know the deadlines. Some newspapers have two deadlines a week. So if you're going to call them on Tuesday, you're not going to get anyone with, uh, you know, uh, you're not going to give you much attention. So you need to know when the deadlines are. You need to have a pitch. Um, I can't help you with that right now because you're each going to have your own pitch. And your pitch is going to be an extension of your media release that you're going to write and have ready. Um, I can, uh, I do run workshops on how to, um, how to write media releases and, uh, and what you need to do when you're on the phone is you need to know who you're asking for, who you're going to be talking to and then you need to be ready to move your pitch because if they don't like your press release that's okay, keep talking and find what they're interested in and if you hear it, change your pitch, develop your pitch, okay? So you need to be ready to go um, and you also, um, you want to Cultivate, just like you're using the media to cultivate relationships with customers and potential customers. You're using the media, um, you're cultivating a relationship to them and what you want to become is what we call an asset. Okay? So that it's not just about what story you can give them, um, but say for instance, I, I pick on Lillian again, with parenting, uh, Lillian may have gotten some press with, with parenting, but if they like Lillian, they know Lillian, they trust Lillian, they're going to be thinking, we need to find a, kid, we need to find a single mum with kids. Oh, I know who can connect us. Lillian works with families, and they'll call Lillian. And so you need to be, your radar needs to be out there. It's not just about how the media can help you. You need to be looking for stories. Um, don't pass on bad tips. Don't pass on um, tips that aren't going to check out. Um, but when you hear of a good story, check it out yourself, see if it stacks up and you can, you know, if you've got a relationship with a journalist, um, you know, when, you've, when you're building that relationship you might say, is it okay if I come across stories, I pass them on to you? And then that journalist is now going to be going, oh, this person's trying to help me. And journalists are only as good as the stories they get, so they're going to want to, to um, cultivate you. Um, who do you ask for? Well, it depends. What's your area? I've covered deadlines. Um, what's your area? I should mention on deadlines, if you're doing TV or radio and, and mainstream, when I mean mainstream, I mean your big papers print, um, they have news conferences throughout the day, but unless you've got a page one story, you really need to be in front of them by eight, nine o'clock in the morning. Whenever I send a press release out, it normally goes out the night before. 
so it's there for them uh, first thing in the morning. Uh, because pretty much by 10, 11 o'clock in print, like in the Courier Mail, they've already decided what's going where. And then as the day progresses, things start to move back in the newspaper and then breaking news comes onto the front. In TV, it's all decided by about 8 o'clock, <laughs> 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and unless, again, there's breaking news, those TV journalists are back in cutting their stories by about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So you need to be really organised and need to have it ready. To, I always have it ready to go the night before. Um, now I just was going to mention, oh that's right, um, who, who is your journalist? Big tip, it is a nightmare ringing a newsroom and <laughs> trying to get through to a journalist. Uh, the, the newsroom secretaries pride themselves on being... <laughs> you will not get past. You will not get past going to collect $200, you will not get free press. Even if you know who you're asking for and you happen to get the Chief of Staff Secretary, good luck! <laughs> um, so, read your local paper, read your target publications, know who your journalist is and then go and create a relationship with them. Don't go and stalk them on Twitter and, and send them pictures. Just follow them on Twitter and look for things that you can actually add value to by comment. By comment. And then if you have a story, go to them privately and, and send them an email. Okay? Does that make sense? So you're not just throwing a net out trying to catch everyone. You're knowing who your journalist is. Like for instance, I'm sorry, what was your name? Cheryl. Cheryl. Uh, your, um, I'm thinking finance journalists would be a good contact for you and business journalists would be a good contact for you and also technology journalists. So I wouldn't be going obviously to a health writer or an education writer or a families writer. I would be going to who would be looking after IT and phones. Also Cheryl, a tourism journalist would be another good contact for you. So think about which journalist would suit yours. Social pages would be good for yours, whoever does the wedding stories, also their social affairs writer who does a lot about, um, uh, who writes stories about Australian Bureau of Statistics information and things like that. So you immediately start to narrow down and it becomes less daunting because now you actually have a name or names and you can connect with. Does that make sense? Does everyone like that idea? Okay. Um, I mentioned, uh, yep. Well, I think we're just about done. How's that? Did we fly through it in time? I do have a workshop coming up. Um, I'm actually doing some online, free online media training um, starting next, uh, next week. I've got a daytime one and an evening one. It's on Tuesday and Thursday. There are details on my Facebook page. Um, and I will be running a workshop um, next month. And that workshop will be looking at developing content um, for press releases with a little bit of media training. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. But, you know, and if I didn't use those words, I mm. used about 50 other words each side of it. But the stand is standing there on, and everyone was like, all my friends would be saying, don't send it to my house again, like laughing at me, because it's obvious. But, you know, that would happen to people all the time. It does, yeah. Um, my first advice would be if anyone ever stopped me and said, can I interview about head lice, I'd say no. Because yeah. <laughs> I could instantly see that as being a negative brand that I don't want to be associated with. Anyone else got an itchy head right now? <laughs> and, um, my second thing would be, when you speak to a journalist, it is, it's actually quite exhausting doing media interviews because you need to be thinking ahead of what the journalist is going to be saying and you need to be thinking about how what you are about to say could possibly be misconstrued, edited, shortened and taken out of context. It's, you're not just having a conversation with another person. They are not your friend. <laughs>